Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode three of the uh, alpha uh, character, I guess, guide to starting to make Isk on a brand new character. Um, in today's episode, we're going to primarily be looking at um, some nifty little tips and tricks uh, to get you started earning Isk at a higher amount. Um, as you can see, we've left off where uh, we were on the last episode. Obviously, I've logged out and logged back in. Um, what we're looking to do today is essentially get a magnate, um, which we talked about in episode one, uh, fit it up for hauling, and then we're going to use a couple of tricks to give us a bit more risk to start. Um, and then I'm going to show you some third-party tools that are great for looking to make some isk uh, uh, in a short period of time. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, another little fit here uh, in terms of what I want to do with this character. So I will eventually want to do some PvP and one of the great ships, uh, Tech 1 frigates for some PvP is a Tech 1 Jewel Web Kestrel. I love this ship. It's so fun. I always fly it um, on new characters. I always put this fit together even if I'm not going to fly one straight away because it's such a fun little ship to fly. So I'll fit it up, basically an afterburner, two webs, a scram, which I believe is here. We're going to put in the lows, well, let's put the uh, rockets on first. So it's gonna be rocket fit, and I'm assuming I don't have the skills for the rocket. Now, if you wanna check what the best variation of a tech one uh, the module is what you do is you right click on it and you click show info and then in the variations the variation that is very last is going to be the best variation of that obviously in tech 2 you can see we've also got polarized uh, and tech 2 launches and then you've got storyline and then you've got faction faction ones are very expensive tech 1 obelisk they are fine in terms of the pricing so let's put these on here Let's then go to the low uh, the low slots. What I like to do is just go for pure DPS, but you can put whatever you want on. I think the ballistic controls, those are very expensive. So when you hover your mouse over them, it will also tell you the estimated price from an ISK perspective. Uh, so we've got ballistic, tech one, crosslink, and then tech two. Tech two is gonna take a while to, to uh, get the skills for. So let's go tech one. Because I want to fight ships that are going to basically be out of my range, I'm going pure damage on this. So even my um, even my uh, mid slots and my rigs, even my rigs are going to basically be looking at that rocket side of things. So uh, I'm going to first put some charges in here uh, to basically see the DPS. Faction charges can be fairly inexpensive. So let's just put some Inferno rockets in there, 55 DPS. And you can see if I turn these off, the DPS goes down. So in the mids, I'm actually going to put projectile weapon rigs. Uh, some of these are going to give, it's not projectile, sorry. Uh, I think it's missile launchers. Yep, yeah, missile launchers. So bay loading gives you DPS, but it takes up half of your uh, calibration. Things like thrusters give you, I think faster reload. Fuel caches give you a longer distance. So at the moment, these hit out from 5K and the scrams are within 10. Uh, sorry, the web is within 10. Scram is within seven and a half. So putting a thruster in is not a bad idea because I believe it's going to give us another 2K. Yeah, 5.6K. And then if we can, we can't put another loader in. So let's just see what we can put in. We are basically maxing out our CPU. Uh, there's not really much else. You can leave it like this because it's going to keep it cheap. 9.9 mil is not bad for a little frigate fit. Let's save this. So, dual web kestrel. And this is obviously dependent on your skills. It's dependent on, you know, what you want to fly and what you want to do. But I'm just going to save this for now. And then I can see here I need this skill book. Let's see if I can buy this off the market quickly. I might be able to quickly get one. So essentially what I've done right now, yeah, there's some, there's a cheap one right here. I'm going to buy this. It's only 10K and I'm going to queue it up because I'm going to obviously be doing other things. 
Uh, while I do that, I can essentially put this skill book into good use, inject that skill, put it in there, let's get it up and running so that we can get uh, started with the rest of our day. So I will train it up to maybe level three. We can even you know, just put one missile launchers here. Uh, that will give us missiles later, which are also very useful for PVE. So at least this way, we've got some, we've got a good idea of which way we want to go. So the skill training queue is done. Now let's go to go get that magnate. Now I picked a Kaldari character on purpose. I want it to be pretty close to Jeter. Jeter is one of four trade hubs in the game. Uh, well, I sh actually, I think there's five main trade hubs, but Jeter is by far the biggest. It's located in this area here called the Forge, this system here, I should say. And now this map, as you can see, it's pretty gross. It's very hard to look at if you want to look at a lot of things. It's very hard to understand the map if you're a new player. And, you know, you'll really just have an understanding of the systems that are connected next door to where you are. The reason why I'm explaining this is it's very important for new players to understand how to look at the map on EVE. It's going to make a big difference to how you play the game. And it will give you a better edge if you understand maps early because things like distribution missions start to make more sense. You can start mapping out your journey. You can start mapping out uh, apologies you can start mapping out basically everything that you want to do so what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to show you a cool little website called dotlan dotlan is a third-party tool so evemaps.dotlan.net or if you google dotlan you can find it um, in here we're actually going to search for Jita. Uh, so what that will do is that will give us an entire map of the system of the, th the forge So this is the forge. This is if we go back to the game. This is basically a map of uh, The forge which I believe where, where, where did it go? It was somewhere nearby. There it is down here So the forge which is down here as you can see this is a map of that but flattened This is gonna give us a better idea of exactly where we want to go. So we want to go here Jita you can see all the systems that are connected. Anything green is high security space. Red and sort of orange and yellow is low security space. Obviously there's no null security around here. It's a, it's a high security system. So this gives you a great idea of places you can go, connecting systems, um, which ones connect to what, uh, gives you a lot of intelligence. Now the second part to this is if you actually click on the Jita icon, it gives you a whole bunch of statistics. This is also great for particularly systems where there might be danger. It can give you information like ships killed, pods killed, NPCs, jumps, all the all the information you need to actually have quite a quite a bit of intelligence before you jump into somewhere like that. Um, another thing to look at, which is Z killboard. Z killboard is basically the killboard for Eve Online. If anyone gets killed, um, it will go into Z killboard. So, you know, for example, if I search up here Jita, then I can see, I can click on the system. These are all the kills that have happened recently. This is all in Eve time. So this was about 13, 23 minutes ago, something like that. Obviously someone's pod died. Maybe they were, you know, they were uh, dueling. Maybe they, uh, they were suspect. There's a whole bunch of reasons why people may die in high security space. But in general, you don't really need to look at this for high security. Uh, but you, it's good to look at it for low and null. It's definitely going to make a big difference in terms of the intelligence you have. Um, in the last couple of episodes, I did say you can die anywhere and even. Here's a good example of that. $5.1 billion, you know, fucking uh, $5.1 million drop. And uh, if we have a look at that, you can see here that this is a Mac that maybe they were, I don't know why this Mac was able to kill it. It alphaed it out. Oh, that's why. Cargo expanders. It just had a shield extender. It probably had enough DPS to kill it. Um, so, you know, someone's ganked this guy. Um, there's other ganks out there as well. You know, this one will be interesting. Neris is a really cheap ship. Um, and he was hauling some expensive stuff in that Neris. Um, so he lost, you know, 4.9 billion ISK, um, which is worth, you know, $50 US. He lost that. 
like you should not be hauling in an Eris with that much loot. You should be having something better. It was one tornado that killed him. These, this is an intelligence tool. It's highly useful. Definitely use it um, if you have the opportunity. So back to what we were doing. We are going to Jita. So we are going to search for Jita in our little console in the map because what you can do is you can right click and set destination. By doing that, you now have a route like a GPS up here um, and that will automatically route you to go to Jita fastest way possible if you've set that up. Couple of things to note. If you want, you can actually uh, set preferences here. Um, you can disable autopilot, you can avoid systems, you can manage your route. Basically, there's a whole bunch of things here that you can set up. Um, so I wanna go shortest way possible, I don't care. Uh, usually I don't care traveling through low and null. But if you are sort of worried about that, you can go through safer systems. It might take longer. Uh, I set mine to shorter because basically I'm aligning, warping. There's no bubbles in low and high security space. It's not going to be too much of an issue for me. But if it is an issue for you, you can set that up to be as safe as possible if you wish. It's still not completely safe, but it's safe enough. All right, before we go, let's make sure we've got everything we, we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, I, I mean, I don't really care about this ship. I don't care about this ship. So we can just leave those there. If we want to come back to them later, we can. So I will undock now and I will start flying to Jita. And when we get there, I will meet you there. All right, we are halfway to Jita. One thing I forgot to mention was about autopilot. And sorry, about the route, I should say. So you'll notice here that when I am warping and jumping gates, it tells me the distance between where I am to where I need to be, um, including what the next jump's name is and the jump after and the jump after. So one part of, uh, I guess, you know, purveying and browsing intelligence is to look at things like, you know, where you are, where you're going, um, how far it's going to take, the security status of the next system, which is usually denoted by color as well. So all of this information is very handy. It's gonna give you quite a bit in terms to go off. Uh, maybe not as important in high security space, but when you go to places like low security space, this can mean the difference between, you know, jumping from one gate to another, which may be gate camped, or, you know, jumping from one gate to another and being safe. I'll give you an example of this and where to look for what to look for on Z Killboard. Uh, if I go back there, so let's go back there now. Um, I'm just going to go to the main menu of Z Killboard, like the main page, and we can see here that there was a something interesting. So let's have a look at this one: two one point nine billion dollar Lashak. Oh, maybe not. Maybe this one here, Enyo. Let's have a look at this Enyo. Uh, so we can see that this Enyo was killed at the Stargate. It actually tells you potentially where they were killed. So this Enyo must have walked in. There was a Loki, a VNI and a Cyclone sitting on that gate. Must have been locked up and destroyed. And there you've lost your Enyo. So the information, like if I was one jump away from here and I was safe, and I had to go through that area in um, Geminate, I would look that up. I'd look at the time of the kill. If, the, if I saw multiple kills on that gate, for example, I would potentially avoid that for the next half an hour to an hour until it may be safe to go. So Z Killboard is absolutely a third party tool to look at and use um, alongside things like Dotland, which give you, you know, further statistics as well. Um, alrighty, so look, we're almost at Jita, um, and what we're going to do when we arrive at Jita is that magnate we put together in, I believe, episode one. Uh, let's have a look here. It will be in our corp fits. Oh, well, in my personal fits. So it's a cheap T1. Uh, I need the skill book, so let me buy that. Hopefully it's not going to take too long. I forgot about that completely. So we'll get the skill book, and we will essentially... I wish I... Ooh, this is not good. So I'll buy the skill book and then we'll go from there. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back once the skill is done. 
Okay, and we are back. So, the skill is complete. We now can fly Amar frigates. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my fitting window. There's my simulated fit there. Now, the good thing about Jita is because it's a trade hub, you can buy things pretty quickly. So, for me to buy everything I need for this fit, it's pretty easy. All I, can, all I have to do is put my mouse over the uh, bottom right corner here, where the estimated value of the ship is. Click buy all. And what that will do is that will create a buy order, basically telling me how much it's gonna to cost to buy everything straight away. And it's pretty close, it's about one mil. So I've already done that. Um, so what will happen then is everything will go into my hangar. So my ship hangar will have the magnet, my item hangar will have the items I need. And then all I have to do is press this button here, which is fit ship. And that will make sure I've got everything I need. And then I can call it whatever I want here. So let's just go newbies, noobs, whatever. And then just click fit ship. And that will fit my ship, which means it's actually now ready to go, fully fitted in my hangar over there. There it is. So let's just make that active and swap. And then that will swap my ship out eventually. There we go. Let's exit the simulation. Yeah, that's fine. And there we go. My ship is fully fitted and ready to go. So I now have a magnate that has 1,159.6 M3 worth of space. Um, and it's now time for me to look at some missions, particularly distribution missions, which is what we're focusing on now. So I'll open up the agency window. And within the agency window, we've got these little boxes up here. I mentioned in the uh, first episode, I believe, that this may change in the next couple of updates. So don't hold me to this, this might change, but I believe the concepts should still remain fairly normal. What I wanna do now is I wanna look for agents in particular, not career agents. Career agents are for sort of tutorial style missions. Normal agents are basically just missions. So I wanna look at agents. Um, now you can put some science behind this if you want. So you can pick a particular faction or a particular corporation that you want to uh, raise your standings with. For me right now, that's not a big issue because I basically have no standings with no factions. Um, what I want to do though, is I want to look for distribution missions and I want to make sure that it is the highest available to me. Now, if I wanted to, I could even go and make sure that it's within two to five jumps. Um, there is a, I guess, a rule of thumb to these missions. If you do them in low security space, you are gonna get better rewards and better standings and it's gonna be a lot faster. Um, as a new player, I, I, you know, I can recommend if you're comfortable enough flying a ship and going and docking in stations and using some of those aforementioned tools, go for it because it's gonna be worth it. You're gonna get to where you need to get to a lot faster. Uh, if you're not comfortable with that yet, then you can just do it in high security space. As you can see, uh, in Ikuchi, I can actually take on three missions straight away. So what you can do is you can right click set destination. Now, when you do this, this box here means that it is a station. If you see a plus, it's a system. If you see a box, the destination is a station. And I can actually do this for all three. Um, because they, I can basically accept all three of these missions because they're all in the same system. So once I've done that, uh, all I need to do is now undock and go to the, uh, the station and basically accept the mission. Okay, here we are in the station now. Wasn't too far of a distance, it was one jump um, and then docking into the actual station itself. Uh, so similar to when we discussed missions, to accept the mission over here on the right, you'll notice that available to me is a level one agent. Now, one, one thing to note about missions is I will now look at this mission here. And basically it will be take this object from point A to point B. And I will set that destination. It's about three jumps away. Now, obviously I can go and I can pick up all the other things in here as well and pick them up. Two things to, uh, a couple of things to note, I should say. One, distribution missions are not going to make you that much money. It's good for a start, but you can see here, it's only like 20,000, 30,000 ISK. It will, however, give me loyalty points as well. And it will also give me standings with the corporation. 
So loyalty points are sort of like a second currency in the game. And all these uh, stations that belong to corporations that have missions will have a loyalty point store. So if I click this button here, which is just in the station window, this will bring up the store for that particular uh, faction or corporation. And you can see here that the Yatiri, they have things that cost loyalty points. Now, if I basically sort this by the cost of loyalty points, um, you can see over time, you know, you can buy these objects, you can use them for yourself or you can sell them on the market. These will also bring you money. There are third party tools that calculate loyalty point to ISK conversion, which is highly recommended. These tools will also give you an edge in terms of what to buy if you're purely looking to make money rather than to use the items you purchase. Some people will enjoy the items because some of them are exclusive to certain stores. Um, and the as you scale up in terms of the levels of missions you do, you get more risk, you get more loyalty points, which means you can get these items faster. Now, if I wanted to, for example, I could actually buy a keep star off this uh, particular um, loyalty store and it's 2 million loyalty points and 200 million isk. So, you know, you could potentially make quite a bit of money doing this. You know, you can buy a Raven Navy issue. You need a Raven and the Nexus chips. You can buy Drake's uh, Navy issue. You can buy character. Like there's a whole bunch of things here that you can do. And it's a great way to um, get some of these items and make isk. Loyalty points are certainly a isk method to not forget about. Obviously, there's things that it's easier to farm loyalty points with. For example, if you were doing faction warfare, then you could certainly farm a lot more loyalty points that way as well. What distribution missions are great for is to get to level three standings for particular corporations so that then you can farm things like combat missions, which give a lot more risk, give a lot more loyalty points, which in turn basically give you a lot more of wealth to, to use. So we accept this, we need to get it done in 52 minutes to get the bonus, which shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. Don't forget to put your cargo into your cargo bay. So we basically just drop it into our ship. You can see we've got plenty more room to go out and do what else, whatever else we need to do. So I'm not going to do three at a time now because that will be pretty boring for you to watch. But you can do that. You can basically go to all the other stations, accept all the other missions, and then drop them off, drop them off, drop them off. And there you go. You've got 100,000 this. And that's the way distribution missions were meant to be played, I believe. That's the way they were programmed. What I am, however, going to do is right now I'm in a coochie, and I'm going to see if this will work. It potentially might, potentially might not. I'm not too sure. So I'm in a coochie, and we are going to... Uh, where are we going? We are going to... Ao Kaneto. I cannot say that. I cannot say that at all. But what we can do is go back to Eve Trade, and then we go to Station to Station, and basically we'll type in Ikuchi. Uh, Ikuchi. Which one are we on? We're on six uh, Moon Six. There we go. And then we are going to Ao. There's only one station there. Perfect. And then basically, if we go back here, there's a couple of things here. Only return profits above, that's fine. Maximum cargo space, this will actually assist us a lot. So we know we've got about 900 M3 available to us. We want at least a 10% return. And our budget, you can actually put just your wallet balance in here uh, to make it easier. But for, for argument's sake, let's just put two and a half million ISK. So what's that? Two, five, zero, zero. One, two, three, there we go. And then you just press search. Um, and then once you do that, uh, this should not matter. Yep, there we go. Once you do that, it's gonna go look at all the buy orders, all the sell orders, and hopefully, if there is something that will make you profit, then it will spit it back out at you and say, yeah, you can actually go and buy this in a coochie, sell it straight away in where you're going, and you're going to make X amount of ISK straight away. So let's see if we do get anything out of this. Sometimes you don't. Obviously, this is a very small cargo bay. We don't have too much ISK. Sometimes you'll be surprised. Like even if it's a return of, uh, you know, 6,000 ISK, hey, it's free money. Like, why not? You're just going to pick it up and sell it. There's also things like NPC uh, buy orders that people don't know about. And NPC buy orders are great because sometimes things like weird things like weird objects in space can get sold at one and bought at the other 
But uh, we can see here that there's nothing here that's really going to make us money. Uh, we can do region to region as well. So we can basically, if we go back to the main page of Eve Trade and we just look at if we're going between regions, we can do that as well. Um, so I don't know if this will actually work. I don't think it will because this is, it's all in the same region. But uh, let's say you're going from one region to another, then you could also do that too. All right, I actually picked up that other mission, which turned out to be a storyline chain style mission. So I'm now uh, here in the um, in the first drop off area. So here we are. Basically, I can open up the mission here because I've got two at once, and then they're all in my interests as well. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just start a conversation, and then press complete. And there we go, big standings boost, 32,000 ISK, 19 loyalty points, all done. Uh, if you want to look at how your standings are going, you can press when you get it, you can press here, or you can open up your character window and then go through the interactions tab. And what you'll notice here is I've got the agent standings, which don't make too much of a difference, to be honest, these can go up to 10. But more importantly, corporation standings, which is where you can see you are grinding up to level up your missions and then you can also unlock things like epic arcs so over here just by doing that we are probably a tenth of the way to level two missions um, and you can see it takes like a couple of seconds to do these so we should have level two well and truly in under an hour and then level three potentially could take two to three hours just by running only distribution missions you can if you want it to be a bit more profitable getting up to level three do combat missions with frigates and destroyers and then cruisers. Uh, but for now, this is a pretty good way for a new character uh, to be able to go into, you know, level two missions without necessarily too much grinding. So we close that, we close that. Now my way back is actually going to cover my next mission. So I'm gonna go back, it's gonna be the exact same thing I'm going to hand in the mission. It's actually an arc, which is going to give me more standings. It's one of five missions. Um, and then basically all happy to go. So thank you guys for coming into episode three. It was a bit of a longer one. Um, in fact, I'm not too sure if I'm going to break this up into two parts. Uh, one part being sort of the tools and the second part being the distribution missions. But uh, I'm hoping you are enjoying it. I'm still playing around with things like audio settings. I'm trying to get it as crisp and as clear as possible. If you are enjoying the content, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know how I can improve. It's all about making sure I give you as much information as possible without bombarding you. I've also brought in the game volume into this episode. If that is something you are enjoying as well, let me know. I've tried to put the game music in as well. I do love the EVE soundtrack, but I know some people don't like it and they just play this game without sound. After all, there is no sound in space. Thank you again for watching and I will see you on the next one.